Okay, can you mute your mic? That's not happening. That's not happening, guys. Hey. 
Hello, madam. of elements, a collection of objects which we call either elements or sets. Now, when we are naming sets, we have, have just posted or shared that screen. We are saying each of the following collections are elements of a set. We have said we can either call them elements or we can call them objects. I've said I'm repeating some little bit of what we did last week for the sake of those who are not there. When you look at my shared screen, I have four examples of types of sets. I have set V, set W, set X, and set Y. Uh, you realize that when we are naming sets, they always have a name, and name is all, names are always represented in capital letters. Uh, for, uh, for example, V, we have cat, dog, and fish. For W, we have one and two. X, we have one, three, five. And why we are saying for all n such that that uh, colony is actually meant such that, or meaning the word such that. So for all n such that n is an odd integer. Remember, you looked at integers and we said integers is a collection of whole numbers that have zero positive numbers and also negative numbers. So the first thing we have identified there is that sets have names. And the names are always in capital letters. They are represented by capital letters. But they also have members, or they also have elements. Now, the elements can, uh, can, can be represented in small letters. For example, R, A, E, O, O. Apart from the small letters, we are saying it can be represented by words. For example, cat, dog, fish. Apart from letters, we can represent the elements using numbers. For example, in uh, set W and X. Now, you will also note that on this screen, every time we refer to an uh, a set, we have brackets. We have the opening bracket and the closing bracket, just to show the boundaries of where the set is beginning and where the set is 
ending. And then you also realize that the kind of brackets we are using here are not the closed brackets, which are square, or they're not uh, round brackets. We are using particular brackets, which you can see on the board, on the screen. That is one thing I want uh, to emphasize on that, on those examples. Another thing I want to emphasize, so we have just said, we have just said, uh, that a set is always represented by capital letters as a name and members are represented in small letters, in small letters. And we have also said that we always write cap uh, sets using opening brackets and closing brackets, just to show the boundaries of where the set is beginning and where the, the set is ending. It can either describe the set which I see ahead or element. Example of Elements of the set. B, the, the set listing elements. The first set we have two elements called the black and the elements. The third set we have one, three, two. That's why we are describing the list. And I've said the set Y is all N that is the set Y. That is this one. You have also said from that example, that definition from that we have shown that. Not at the element the examples of finite set. Finite means but in finite for example, you can write natural numbers one to one in rot a few also and then we have closed the bracket can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. So we were explaining, can we proceed? We were looking at the three, the, the examples on the, on the screen, and we, was, we were just explaining what they meant, and I was on the last one, and I said the last one said why. Hello? Hello? Ye yes, please. Niambi and Niko Kiasi. Kindly, I'm in class, eh? I'm in class. Please, yes. Call me at Sasaba. Yes, please. Eh. So I was explaining the last set 
why and I was saying that in that set we have described the elements of the set but we have also gone ahead and listed the elements of our set and we have said set Y is an example of infinite set because we are not able to list the elements that's why we are using the three dots from the beginning gave a few examples and then three dots at the end we shall look at that more as we proceed so i'll be i'll be admitting as i teach as i go on we shall look at more details ahead that's what i'm saying now i have, I have already hinted and said when we are writing sets the names of the sets we always indicate in capital letters and the elements of the set we indicate in small letters but i had gone ahead and said not all of them do we use small letters we can use small letters we can use numbers we can use names i think we have seen that example and then apart from that we have also said anytime we are writing sets we have brackets and the kind of brackets we have here are a bit different from the brackets that we saw in the closed interval or in the open interval we are using a pair of brackets the opening bracket the closing bracket just to specify where the elements of that set are beginning where the elements of that set are ending we have also said that an object is a set in a set has names either we refer to them as element or we refer to them as a member of the set description of sets when we are to describe sets there are two ways we describe sets i've also also hinted that i've said either we list the elements of the set or we describe we describe in words the elements we are referring to so we are saying when when we are listing what what are we interested in we are saying to denote a set with a number of elements we can list the elements of the set and then close with the brackets i'm just explaining how, how where we are coming up with the name of the set and the elements of the set all that so i'm beginning at the at the first point just using that example we have said we can list so if you have so many elements we can list the elements elements of the set and then close them with the brackets for example opening bracket close the bracket
Okay, sorry for for the network. It was a problem with network. We can proceed. Let me share again. Come on, you think. I'm you think it's more time. I don't need any other. I see me talking. Let's proceed. Let's proceed. Give me a thing. You are describing sets and then the network just went off. Sorry. We were describing sets through listing and we saw that. So let's proceed. So we are saying if you want to not the elements, I mean, you said it's not possible to write. We said that one that is a waste of time, and therefore because of that, that's when the uh, the, 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 the do, three dots come in. So for example, you have said open the brackets one, three, comma, two, comma, three dots, and comma, hundred. We have shown the first element, one and two, one at the first and second element, but we have also shown the last element, 100. The, th the three dots in between, yes. That the, that the, with 100 as the last number. Okay, let's proceed. Yeah. So I've said the three dots, dot, dot, dot means re, it's read as so on, meaning that the pattern is being repeated or continuous up to the end last number, which is 100. Now, supposing a problem, you want to consider this set of 1, 2, comma, dot, 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 comma, 100. Later, you want to refer to it. We don't want to write it the way it is. All we need is that we must give it a name so that when we are referring to it, we only indicate it using a name. For example, we can say A is equal to open the brackets 1, comma, 2, comma, dot, 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 comma, 100. So that's what we are simply saying. Now, usually we had already said that usually we use small letters to indicate the elements of members of a set. But we also said so that we, apart from letters, the other ways we represent the elements of the set. And we use capital letters like A, like B, C, D, ETC, to indicate the name of the set. Earlier on, I had also indicated, I'd say, sometimes the names of particular sets represent certain sets. For example, when we are looking at rational numbers, we use capital Q. When we are using, looking at integers, we use capital Z. When we are looking at natural numbers, we use capital N. But we have also said not always are we uh, using those numbers, I mean, those letters to represent the names of that set. There are situations where you come across N just to mean, let's say, cat and fish. Remember, N is uh, uh, natural numbers, but this time we are using it as elements of cat and fish. So you look at the question and what it is saying before you conclude. That one I've already explained. Now, we have just looked at set A for, let's say natural numbers from one to 100. Suppose we want to represent the number 160. We ask ourselves, is the number 160 part of the set of A? Remember set A was beginning from one to 100. That simply means if I want to write 160, 
then I'm simply saying 160 is not a member of set A because 160 is beyond 100. So when, when we are writing that a certain number or a certain element is a member of a certain set or not a member, how do we represent that symbolically or in notation form? So for example, here we have said, if 100 is an element of set A and 101 is not an element of set A, there is a way we represent that using a symbol. You can see I've written 100 with something that looks like an E in between, then I say A. So I'm simply saying 100 belongs to set A, or 100 is a member of set A, or 100 is an element of set A. But when I want to say that 101 is not a member of A, I simply use the same symbol with a slash on that symbol E to show that to show that 100 is not 101, sorry, 101 is not a member of set A. So take note of that symbol. Anytime you see that symbol that looks like an E, it simply means an element or a member of, or belongs to, or a member of. When you see E with like a slash, it simply means that element does not belong to that set. Okay? Finite sets. I think I also mentioned finite sets. And said we, we said we have what we call finite sets, but we also have what we call infinite sets. When we talk of finite sets, I've said it's where you, in finite sets, you list every element of that set. For example, the, example, the first three examples we saw, set V was cat, dog, and fish. have listed all the elements. And I've said that, ele that set has three elements. We also saw another set that has an element one and two, meaning that that set has only two elements. We also saw another set uh, that ha had elements one, three, and five, meaning that set has only three elements. So those are examples of finite sets because in finite sets, we are listing every element of a set. So give an example, A is equal to whole numbers between 2000 and 2005. I have described the elements of that set. And I've also gone ahead and listed the elements. I'm able to list all the elements, and therefore this qualifies to be a finite set. V has cat and dog. It qualifies to be a finite set because I've listed every element of that set. Cat and dog has only two elements. Same to X down there. So we are saying V is a finite set of two English words identifying common household pets, cat and dog. Similarly, W is a finite set consisting of integers, or we can even say even numbers, two up to four, six and eight. X is a finite set consisting of integers or odd numbers, one, three and five. But if I had said ZX, I mean set X, is a, fun, uh, is a set that has, let's say, odd numbers or odd integers, then that one have opened the, the brackets. It's goes, going up to infinity. So that simply means it's beginning from one, but the end is not known. So because of that, it no longer uh, is a finite set, but an infinite, uh, infinite set. Infinite set. In infinite set, we are saying it is not possible to list every element of a set. And a good example is we had already said y, which was equal to open the brackets that n for all n such that n is an odd integer. I'm not able to list all the integers, and therefore that's why I'm using dots from the beginning, and I'm also having dots at the end. So that qualifies to be an infinite set. Notation. How to, do we use notation or letters to represent both elements and members of the set? So given an object X, which is an element of A, or it can either be element of A or it can be not an element of A, 
I think we saw 100, we saw also 101. So we are saying when X is an element of A, we know how to write that. We say X, we write X with that ka E that you saw or that symbol you saw, then we write capital A, meaning X is a member of set A or X is an element of set A. But if X is not an element of A, then we said we shall write that X with the simple E with a slash, a stroke or a line that is going through that simple E to mean that X is not an element of A or X is not a member of A. I think that was that is what I've been um, explaining. But X either we say X belongs to A or X does not belong to A. Empty set. We also have what we call empty set. Another name for empty set is called null set. What is the notation for an empty set? We either use the Scandinavian letter, which looks like a zero with like a slash in between, to show that that is an empty set, or we simply open the brackets with nothing in between and we close the brackets. So anytime we have four, I mean, what, the brackets with nothing in between, we are simply saying we are referring to an empty set. Yes. I'm admitting as I go on. So I was explaining. You have a set called empty set, which is also referred to as null set. And we saw the Scandinavian. We can either represent that using a Scandinavian symbol or only you can use brackets with nothing in between. So we are saying because the empty set has no elements, if we list all the elements of it and then and close them by brackets, then the alternative way we show that is using two brackets, the beginning and the end, but in between, there is nothing. I've explained what opening the brackets with, for example, letter X with the two colon, with a colony, then P of X in full, it means for all X such that. So anytime you see a colony in set theory, it also always represents the word such that. So for all X such that P of X, then you close the brackets is true. You can see I'm using round brackets inside, but now the enclosing brackets are different. So you need to note that. That one we have explained. Had no aspect of, of the sets that when we are writing sets, we already have seen the number, the elements of the set. So that sometimes we are interested to know how many elements a particular set has. That's why we are referring to as number of the set. So the number of the set is written as, we have a small KN outside the bracket, then we write the opening bracket, we write in between the name of the set and we close the bracket to mean how many elements do we have in that particular set? In that particular set. Nirudia wapi? Hello? Nimesema, we are looking at the number of a set. How do we represent that symbolically? I've said we have a small letter N outside the bracket. Then you open the brackets. Then you write the name of the set in capital letters, A, for example. Then you close using a bracket. And that simply means how many elements 
are there in that particular set. For example, we have A is equal to, open brackets, 1, 2, 3, 4, close brackets. This means that this set A has only four elements. That is the cardinal number, cardinal number of sets, so the number of elements in the set, just as simple as that. You see? Now, summary of the symbols we have seen right from the time we were looking at uh, prime numbers, natural numbers, etc. We already have said the card anytime you see the Scandinavian symbol that looks like a zero with a slash, that is denoting an empty set or a null set. But we also said we can represent this, uh, this set, empty set, also using brackets, using brackets with nothing in between. We have also said anytime you see the capital letter N, we might be talking about natural numbers. Anytime you see the capital letter Z, we might be talking about integers. Anytime you see Q, we are denoting rational numbers. And we said rational numbers, we said rational numbers, a number written like a in fraction form, but it has the numerator and the denominator. For example, V is the numerator, Q is the denominator. The number two there is wrong because I think it's typing error. We are saying P such that we have P, it's written P out of Q such that P and Q are or belongs to, are elements in Z. So we use the symbol that ka E you saw, not two. Not two, please. You correct that. I'm talking about this. Sorry. We have written PQ, then two, then Z. We are saying that two is wrong. We are supposed to write the symbol E. You remember the like E, which was meaning belongs to, or a member of, or an element of. And then I've also said, but Q is not equal to zero. So that six again is a mistake. These are correct if I give you the notes. Six is a mistake. We are saying Q, or the denominator is not equal to zero. We have also seen R, something that looks like an R, and we said R represents a set of real numbers. And we said real numbers includes both rational and irrational numbers. When we combine rational numbers and irrational numbers, we get the real numbers. C. C represents a set of complex numbers written in the form A plus B I, such that A and B, remember those are real numbers, belongs to set R, belongs to set R. Now, you can see something that looks like a, an, a U, a U on the screen, that means union, it means union. We shall look at examples later. Anytime you see something that looks like a U, we are saying, we are saying union, union. Union, and we shall know what union is the next slide. Anytime you see something that looks like a small n, like in Ikubwa, we are saying intersection. Intersection. We shall also look at what is the meaning of intersection. What's the meaning of intersection? Anytime you see something that looks like a U inverted, the one you're seeing on the screen, with like a bar, or sometimes it doesn't have a bar at the bottom, we are saying subset, 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 and at the E, we say member or element of, okay? We shall use them ahead there. So suppose we are saying given X, such that X is a member of natural numbers or a member of N, and X is greater than eight, what does that mean? Which is the first number in this set? If x is greater than 8, it means the first one is 9, because 9 is a natural number. 10, like that. So let's now look at union. We said the symbol for union is some u, something that looks like a u, like in Nipana Kidogo. So that means a union of two sets. But it can also mean a union of three sets. But now we are beginning with two sets, two sets. 
when we are looking at the union of two sets, what do we mean? What do we mean? What do we mean by union of two sets? So we are saying the union of two sets A and B consists of all elements belonging to either A, set A, or B, or they are in both. Either the elements are in A, or the elements are in B, or are in both A and B. For example, here we can start writing as we move on. We are saying union, eh? Union, you can see how we are representing that symbolically or in notation form. We write A union B, or A with the symbol U in between, then B, to mean A union B. So let's write this example. Let's write this example down. Suppose set A, you have a set A. Remember how to write sets? We write it in capital letters. So write capital letter A is equal to, open the brackets, one, three, five. Close the brackets. One, comma, two elements. Okay? Then set B, B, capital B, is equal to open the brackets, cat, comma, dog, comma, fish, close the brackets. Now we want to look at the union of set A and B. That means that all the elements, either the elements are belonging to set A, or the elements are belonging to set B, or both A and B. So let's look, so for us to write the union, then we shall write A union, remember the symbol is the U. A U B, meaning A union B is equal to, open the brackets, one, three, five, cut, comma, dog, comma, fish, close the brackets. That is representing the union. Somebody has written something that you see. Uh, she has said, pardon, please. I'll repeat. When we are looking at the union of two sets, whether there are two or three sets, but right now we are looking at two sets, we are saying we are interested in elements that are either in A or that are in set B or that are appearing in B both. And anytime we are writing the union of two sets, if the elements are appearing in both, we write that element once. We shall look at an example. But we have begun with the first example. Let me give the general example. Suppose, suppose we are looking at children belonging to a family of Kamau and Jen. We are saying all those children belong to the two parents. Isn't it? So that is a union. Or we are saying, I'm interested in first years. I'm interested in first years who are doing, uh, let's say, just interested in the EDA, the, the EDA group, eh? that those men who are doing English, and we have students who are doing Kiswahili. So when I'm looking at the union, of set A are students who are doing Kiswahili, set B are students who are doing English, then when I want the union, I'm combining the students who are doing English together with the students who are doing Kiswahili. That's a union. So that's why when we were looking at the example of the two sets, I had said set A is equal to open the brackets one, three, five. They said B is equal to open the brackets, cut, comma, dog, comma, fish, close the brackets. Therefore, the union, I'm saying, I'm writing A, union B is equal to open the brackets, one, comma, three, comma, five, comma, cut, comma, dog, comma, fish, close the brackets. That's a union. Let's look at a unique example, another, a, a, a more unique example. Suppose set P, or let's say Q, set Q, set Q is equal to one, two, three, four. Close the brackets. One, comma, two, 
comma three comma four. Close the brackets. That is set Q. Set R. Suppose set R is this. One, two, five, seven. One, two, five, seven. So what is the union of Q? Union R. Q union R. Remember one and two are appearing in both. So we only write them once. So Q union R is equal to, open the brackets, Q, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, seven. I think we are together there. Are we together? Okay, we shall look at more examples. Now, the example I've shown on the screen, I've said this is written as A union B. Elements belonging to both sets belong to the union. For example, if A is singers and B in, is in Stromander, in Stromander the, the, the pronunciation there, then A union B is musical performers. Musical performers. Or I'm saying set A has, uh, let's say, orange and guava. Set B has apple and, 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 and bananas. Therefore, A union B will be a set of fruits. I'm actually interested in fruits, but you see I can still go on and list them because I'm not interested in all the fruits. I'm only interested in apple, guava, banana, and orange. So instead of saying it's a set of fruits, because I'm not interested in all the fruits, I have to be very specific. I'm only interested in four kinds of fruits. So when we are using the union, anytime you meet the word union, we must it must go with the word or. We have just said either the element belongs to set A or the element belongs to set B or is appearing in A and B. Sorry. I'm saying, I am saying, anytime you come across union, it always goes with the word or. If you are interested in the word intersection, it always goes with the word and. So we were saying elements can either be in set A or set B. Or it's appearing in A and B. Somebody is saying they are not hearing me again, so I'll be forced to repeat that. I'm saying any time you are referring to the word union, it always goes with the word or, or, meaning given two sets or three sets, either the element is in the first set or the element is in the second set or the elements appearing in both sets. That is what I, I mean. Uh, somebody is saying they are not hearing me, and they yet in a mute kilometer. Okay. So operation on sets, operation we always know operation is addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. But here maybe we shall limit ourselves to the first three. Addition. Subtraction, 
and multiplication. So under union, I've already hinted that we use the word all. We shall do a lot of examples. And we are saying, what do we mean by the word or? It might mean different in English, but in mathematics, especially in set theory, when I say or, I simply mean and or. So I'm simply saying, either this, the, the, I had already explained that when we use the word or, we are simply saying, given two sets, P and Q, either this element X is in P, or the element X is in Q, or the element X is appearing in P and Q. That's what we are saying. So we move on. Let's look at an example. Let's write that example. Let's write the example down. We want to look at suppose A, Right set A is as, as shown on the open brackets zero two zero two sorry for breaking because of admitting zero two four Zero, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. 10, 12, 14. Those are the elements of set A. 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. Then close the brackets. Set B is equal to 0, 3, 6, 9, 12. Close the brackets. I want you to write A union B. Don't even use the one on the board. Just write the, 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 the union there now that you understand what union is. We said either the elements are in A or the elements are in, are in B or the elements are appearing in both. I want you to write the union. So A union B is equal to open the brackets, zero. Remember, zero is appearing in A, is also appearing in B. So we write it once. Then two, two is only appearing in the first set A. Then three, three is appearing in the set B. Then four, appearing in set A. Six is appearing in both, we write it once. Then eight, nine, 10, 12, 14. We have written the elements, either the elements are appearing in A, for example, zero, two, four, six, eight, nine, 10, not nine, 10, 12, 14. Or the elements are appearing in B, have you seen? Or they're appearing in both. Which elements are appearing in both? We have zero and six. Zero and six are appearing in both. And because we are looking at union, we only write them once. So we are saying here the elements six and 12 are in both sets A and B. And even zero, hence indicated once. Now the union of two sets A and B that denoted by A union B, as you can see on the board, that is the symbolic way of writing A union B. And we are saying the set of all elements which belong to A or B. So we are saying, in symbolically we are writing A union B is equal to open the brackets for all X, such that X is a member of A or X is a member of B. X is a member of A or X is a member of B. That's how we write union. Now, we have what we call Venn diagram. It's called Venn because the person who came up with the, those diagrams was called, his name was Venn. So that's why it's called Venn diagram. When we are representing uh, um, sets using diagrams, you realize as we should move forward, we shall always begin with the rectangle. 
Rectangle always show what we call the universal set. We shall explain that in detail. It shows the universal set. And the other symbols, we use them to represent the subsets. Remember subsets, eh? Wengine wanisikia, wengine wanisiki. So I really... Can you hear me now? You don't need to mute, so you cannot hear me. I'm the one only talking. So, um, we have already just said that the person who came up with these diagrams was called Venn. That's why it's called Venn diagram. And when we are writing, uh, when we are representing that information on a diagram, we are saying the first one that is outside that encloses everything. That encloses everything. I'm saying I'm being told I'm now audible. That encloses everything is the rectangle. The other diagrams or uh, shapes that we use inside the rectangle can either be circle or any, but most of the time we use the circles or oval to represent the subsets. But I've not reached the level of uh, using the, the rectangle. I'm just use, representing union. So when we are writing union diagrammatically, that's how it looks like. That we have A, set A and B, that has two circles or two ovals, and we shade everything to show that they're belonging, those, those elements are belonging in the two sets, either in A or in B. We shade everything. You realize that intersection, we don't do that. As we move on, we shall see. Note that since union means to put members of the various sets together, for example, A is equal to, open the brackets, R, A, E, O, U. That's a set of vowels. A set of vowels. And B is uh, A, B, C, D, E, then A union B, you simply put members of A and B together. I think that's one I've now simplified. We are simply putting members of A together with members of B, so long as we don't repeat the members in either of the sets. And we have also said that you can refer to the number of elements in the set. So, for example, set A, how many elements do we have in set A? A, A, E, O, U. Those are five elements. How many sets and members do we have in set B? There are also five. So, the cardinal number of elements for A are five, for B are five. You realize those are called equivalent sets. We shall look at what equivalent sets mean later in the lesson. Having looked at union, now let's look at intersection of sets. Intersection of two sets. Remember in union we are saying anytime we see union, we use the word or, meaning that there is an element, either it belongs to A, or this element belongs to B. But in the intersection, it must appear in both A and B. If you're looking at the intersection, must appear both in A and, and both the two sets. So if it's only in one set, then it's not an intersection. So we are saying the intersection of two sets, A and B, is denoted by A intersection B. You can see the intersection looks like a, a huge N, small N. So we are saying, so we write this in notation form, A intersection B is equal to open the brackets, for all X such that X is a member of A and X is a member of B. X is a member of A and X is a member of B. For example, so we are saying here is a set of elements which belong to both A and B. So let's look at examples in the next slide. Sorry, just a minute. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I didn't uh, proceed because of diagram, so we shall use the PDF one. Please kindly allow me to use the PDF. PDF document for some figures. I was not able to. Transfer them to the PowerPoint. And I think before we look at uh, students, uh, let's let's finish the union, the intersection first, and we can have questions. To work out. Just a minute. A minute. Yes, we can begin from there. I'll only try to increase the font. The other hundred will be two twenty one twenty five. Share. So before I go to the section, uh, let me show you the, the diagram for union, which I was not able to. Yes, we are saying set A and B. The union of these two sets, you can see, I have shaded twice. The shading, the shading is twice. The first one and the second one, you can see A union B. Even the second one is A union B. I'm shading everything. I'm shading everything to show that I'm actually representing the union. I'm using the, the PDF file because of the, 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 the diagrams, kindly. I'm using the PDF file instead of PowerPoint. Now I have switched. That's why I kept quiet, Kidogo. So we proceed now. So that is the diagram for Junior. We shared everything because it's all the elements in A and B put together. And that is, I think that's what we said. That one we had explained. Now we go to intersection. So we are saying, anytime we are looking at intersection, we are simply saying that two sets A and B, and this element must, uh, X must appear in both A and B. The element must appear in both A and B. And notationally, on the notation form, this is how we write it. A intersection B is equal to open the brackets, for all x such that x is belongs to a and x belongs to b x belongs to a and x belongs to b that is the diagrammatic representation to show that there is an element x which belongs both in a and b we have actually shaded the intersection between set a and set b we have also shown uh, a shaded region, if you have three sets, A, B, C, where the three sets are intersecting, that's where we are shading to show that is intersection. We shall look at examples. Let's look at example. There's a, an example on the screen. An example on the screen. An example on the screen. Still uh, admitting people. Look at that example on the screen. That given, you can write it down. Given given a is equal to open the brackets one comma three comma five comma seven dot dot dot. 
to mean this is an example of an infinite set. It's continuous. Then set B, look at set B, the elements of set B. Open B is equal to open the bracket. Two, three, five, seven. Close the brackets. So the union. We can look at the union. We can also look at the intersection. You can do at it where you are. Look at that. Elements. You can see three, five, seven are appearing in both set A and set B, meaning that is the intersection. Remember the section that the element is either is both in A and in B. So three is found in A, five is found in A, seven is found in A, but in all those elements, three, five, and seven are also found in B. That is an intersection. But we had a situation where um, one was only in set A and also the other, also two was also in set set B. Sorry, set B. So we are simply saying if B, that is the elements of B, and that is the elements of A, therefore in union we are putting all the elements together. And in that section, we are putting the elements that are appearing in both. Appearing in both. And I've given an example in the union. I said we have uh, first years, we have students who are, let's say, BA science. We also have students who are BA arts. So when we're interested in the union, I'm simply saying, we are putting students who all the first years, both the arts, BA arts, and the BA science together to give us a union. But what about intersection? What about intersection? Now, like in first year, all students do core units. This one-on-one is being done by all the students. So that now becomes an intersection, an intersection for all the first years that all of all the first years are doing ESM 101. They're also doing communication skills. That's an example of intersection. We can look at more intersection. Suppose C it has these elements, one, two, A, B, C, and D has A, three, one, E, O. What is the intersection? Which, which elements are common? So C intersection D will give us A, will give us 1. I think those are the two elements which are common, A and 1. While the union, the union has elements 1, 2, 3, then A, B, C, E, O, E, and O. And therefore, when I'm interested in the cardinal number of elements, or how many elements we have in the union, there are eight. How many elements do we have in the intersection? There are two. How many elements do we have in the in uh, set C? There are five. How many elements do we have in set D? There are five. But the union has eight, and the intersection has as two. Cartesian product. This is now multiplication of sets. There are situations where we are multiplying sets. We are borrowing this from the Cartesian plane, uh, where you have maybe set A has certain number of elements, let's say. You can write it down. Suppose, suppose A has elements one and two. Let's write that one down. Set A is equal to Open the brackets, 1, comma, 2, close the brackets. Set B has equal to, open the brackets, A, comma, B. Close the brackets. What is the Cartesian product of these two sets? We are multiplying the two sets. We are saying A times B, therefore, becomes, remember, A was 1 and 2. Then B was A and B. That we are multiplying every element of A with each of the elements in B. So that means when I multiply A, 
I mean, when I multiply one, remember, one is in A. So I'm taking one, element one, and I'm multiplying by every element in B. So the Cartesian product will become, therefore, one, comma, A, that is one, then one, comma, B. Then I'm taking B, I'm taking two in set A, and I'm multiplying by each of the elements in set B. Each of the elements in set B. Just a minute. Let me admit again. Then I look at somebody has written something. Yeah, you have said, please pardon, madam. I'll repeat that when we are looking at uh, multiplication, we are actually looking at the product of sets. We are actually looking at multiplication. Multiplication of a given two sets, we are multiplying the elements in set A with each of the elements in set B. We pick an element in set A and multiply with each of the elements in set B. So I've just given you an example and said, suppose set A has elements one and two. Then set B has elements A and B. A and B. So what's the Cartesian product of the two sets? A is given by A times, the symbol for times, B is equal to, open the brackets, what Cartesian product will be? I take one, which is in set A, I multiply by each of the elements in B. So I'll have one, comma, A, and I have one, comma, B. Again, I go back to set A, I have the number two, or the element two, I multiply the elements, so I have two, comma, And I have two.
Sorry for the network. The network went. Network went. So I'm back. I'm back. Somebody has said I repeat from the intersection. Intersection, I'll do that. And I'm saying we can do intersection by doing an example. Please write an example where you are, write an example so that we explain what intersection means. We have already said intersection means that the element is in both sets. It must appear in both sets. It must appear in both sets. The element must appear in both sets. So we are saying, can we write down an example? We have gone back to intersection because somebody has said, I begin with the intersection because they didn't get anything. So let's write this example on intersection. Let's write an example in the section. Given set A, please write that as, uh, example. Given set A is a set of prime numbers less than 10. Prime numbers less than 10. Set B is a set of Square numbers less than 10. Sorry, the network again just disappeared. Network disappeared. Let me share again. I'm sorry with the issue of network. Uh, somebody had said that he explained up to, I begin with the intersection. And I had given you an example. I had said, suppose set A is a set of prime numbers less than 10. So we go ahead and list that, that set. So A is equal to, open the brackets, 2, 3, 5, 7. Close the brackets. Then B, we had said, is a set of square numbers less than 10. Square numbers less than 10. Again, we go ahead and list the elements. That means if one is the first square number. So one, four, nine. So set B has only three elements. One, four, and nine. Close the brackets. Therefore, to get in the section, 
it means that the elements must be appear in both. So which elements are appearing in both? Remember set one, set A had two, three, five, seven. Then set B has one, four, seven. I mean one, four, nine. Sorry, one, four, nine. Do we have any element that is common? If we don't have an element that is common, we simply say A intersection B is empty. A intersection B is empty. Yes, nothing in both. Thank you. Nothing in both. Mm. Nothing in both. So somebody has already said nothing. So when it's nothing in both, we simply say A intersection B is equal to open the brackets, Kaspersky double, close the brackets. Or we use the Scandinavian symbol of zero with a slash in between. I think we have begun getting. That was intersection. Now we had again uh, was were explaining Cartesian product of two sets. We said we are actually looking at the multiplication of the points and we are borrowing knowledge of the Cartesian plane. And we had said, suppose set A has the following elements. A has one, two, three, and B has M and N. So when we are looking at the Cartesian product of the two sets, we simply pick one element in set A and multiply by each of the elements in set B. So that is A times, times the symbol for times, A times B is equal to, open the brackets, don't use the brackets that we have in the, in the PDF, the ones that I had shown you. So you open the brackets, then we have one comma, M, one comma N, as the first one. Then we go to the second number or element two in A. So two, we multiply two by each of the elements in B. So it will be two comma M and also two comma N. Then we go back to A, we have three. So we multiply three comma N, M and three comma N. We are simply saying, we are multiplying each of the elements in set A with, with each of the elements in set B to get the various products. Okay, that is the Cartesian plane. Now let's look at equal sets. What are equal sets? What are equal sets? We are saying two sets are equal or they're said to be equal if and only if they have exactly the same, the same elements. They have exactly the same elements, exactly the same elements. For example, we are saying A is equal to B if and only if the elements in A are equal to the elements in B. So when do elements, when do sets therefore become equal? When do we say that set A is equal to set, is equal to set B? There are two things or two facts about equal sets. Number one, the order of the elements in the sets does not matter. But we are saying if an element is listed more than once, I think that's what we want to, the repeating that element it must only appear once. That was for the other example. But now I'm looking at two sets. They are saying that two sets are equal if the number of elements in A, the cardinal number of elements in A are the same. The cardinal number of elements in A are the same. For example, A is equal to A, open the brackets, R, A, E, O, U. And B has E, I, A, O, U. Those elements are the same, but the order is not the same. In set theory, the order of the elements does not matter, does not matter. So we are saying the elements are the same and the elements are also 
the cardinal number is the same. We are simply saying set A has how many elements? Five elements. Set B has how many elements? Five elements. But which are these type of elements? A, A, E, O, U. Each one of them has A, A, E, O, U, but the order is different. So those are examples of equal sets. Somebody saying, Madam, you are too fast. Eh? So I'll go back. I'm saying, when do we say two sets are equal? Number one, we are saying two sets are equal if the number of the elements in the two sets are the same. If set A has four elements, then set B must have four elements. That's one condition. Number two, we are saying the, set, the elements must be similar. If in set A, I have one, three, five. In set B, I might have five, three, one. The elements are the same. The order is different, but they're similar, and the number of elements are the same. So we are saying, first we look at how many are they? They must be equal. Then two, are they similar? Yes, they must be similar, irrespective of the order. Order is not important, but the two must be similar, and they must also be equal in number. That's what we are saying for them to be equal sex. So we are saying then, when we represent that symbolically, we are saying that A and B are equal sets. That is A is equal to B. If A has similar elements or exact elements and as B. So we write A is equal to B or A is contained in B or B is contained in A. Or A belongs to B and A, I mean B belongs to, to A. Let's see how different are they with equivalent sets. Remember we have mentioned equal sets, but these ones are equivalent sets. Equivalent sets. When are sets equivalent? They have same similar number of elements, but the elements might not be the same in terms of, uh, which word do I use? Or I can say the elements are equal in number, but they are not similar. For the equal ones, they are equal and they are similar. But for the equivalent, they are equal, they are equal in number, or the number of elements are the same, but the, I mean, the number is the same. If it's five, it's five, but the elements are not the same. For example, let's look at C. C has elements one, two, a, B, C, and D has elements A, 3, 1, E, O. So how many elements do we have in C? Five. How many elements do we have in D? Five. But are the elements similar? No. So this is an example of equivalent sets, which is different from the other one. The other one, they were similar and equal. Similar and equal in number. So get that clearly. Similar and equal in number. Let's now look at examples so that we don't go far. Please write these examples so that we work out more examples for us to understand. Now, given Let's look at examples now. We are working out examples for practice. More examples. Find the intersection of sets and the union of the following sets. Question one. Question one. Given M is equal to open the brackets, green, red, yellow, black. And N is equal to blue, green, yellow. Which set represents M union M union N? M union N. Remember, we said M union N is that all the elements belong to both sets, to the sets, either in A or B. So we're saying which one represents the union? A, yellow. That's not true. B, green and yellow. C, blue, red, 
yellow. The correct one is the last one. It's giving us all the elements in the two sets. Green, red, yellow, blue, and black. Suppose we were looking at that example that we were interested in intersection. We are saying which element is common in the two? Green is in M, green is in N. So the intersection, one of them is green. Another one is yellow. Yellow is found in M, yellow is found in N. So M intersection N is green and yellow. But M union N is green, red, yellow, blue, black. That's an example number one. Let's look at example two. Given A is equal to, set A has two, four, five, seven, eight. Set B has three, five, eight, nine. What is A union B? All the elements. So D will be correct again. You have two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine. What about the intersection? We can look at intersection again. What will be the intersection? It will be five and eight. Because five is in A and B. Eight is also in A and B. Listen to somebody saying, pardon please, example two. Yes. Let's look at example two. We are saying set A has the following elements. Two, four, five, seven, eight. Then set B has three, five, eight, nine. Without looking at the multiple choice, what is A union B? We have said all the elements that belong to both the sets. I mean, all, all the elements put together. All the elements put together, not belongs, put together. So that is two, three, four, five, seven, eight, and nine. That's the union. But suppose we were interested in A in the section B. We are interested in elements the same if five is in both A and B, and eight is also in both A and B. So therefore, the intersection of A, the section B. Somebody has raised her hand. Yes, please. We shall proceed. Example three. Suppose that A has the following elements three, six, nine, twelve, and fifteen. And B has the following element two, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve. What is the intersection of the two sets? Intersection. What is common in the two? Six is appearing in both. So the intersection is actually six alone. You know the union. So you can go ahead and write the union. Example four. Example four. Suppose set A has the following elements. This is a set of... Uh, Cut the, of the cartesian of the product of the sets, the two sets, A and B. So the cardinal points for A, we have um, the pairs. So A is equal to open the brackets. The first pair is negative two and negative one. The second pair is negative one and zero. The third pair is one and eight. While set B, the first pair is negative three and negative four, negative two and negative one, negative one and two. So they're saying, what is the intersection of set A and B? The intersection of set A and B. What is common? What is common? The one that is common is B. 
negative 2 and a negative 1, those points are appearing in both the sets. Next example, given R is 1, 2, 3, 4. A is 0, 2, 4, 6. B is 1, 3, 5, 7. What is R intersection P? R intersection P, we are looking at items which are common, and that is 1 and 3. So the intersection is 1 and 3. Suppose we were interested in R intersection A. R intersection A is 2 and 4. Suppose we were interested in um, A intersection P. A intersection P. Anything common there? That is empty. That is empty. There's nothing common in between the two sets. There's nothing common between the two sets. Uh, having looked at those examples, I think it's important that you please write these examples down so that you can go and work out on your own. So that we don't, if you proceed, we shall be moving fast. So, question one, question one, question one, given Q is equal to zero, two, four, Six. I'm giving questions. I'm giving questions. Q is equal to 0, 2, 4, 6. W is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3. Z is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. Question. What is the intersection of question A? Q intersection W intersection Z. Q intersection W intersection Z, B, Q, intersection Q, Q, intersection W, C, Q, intersection Z, 4, or D, W, intersection Z. Number 5, or, uh, or E, Q, union W, Q, union W. I would have said, pardon, please. I have given you a question. I've given you a question. I'm saying, given set Q has the following elements, 0, 2, 4, 6. Set W has 0, 1, 2, 3. 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Z, uh, Z, set Z, 1, 2, 3, 4. So what is the intersection of question one? Yes, I'm repeating. So question one is Q intersection W intersection Z. Question B, Q intersection W. Question C, Q intersection Z. Question D, W intersection Z. Question four, Q union W union Z. Question five, Q union W. Question six, Q union Z. And the last question, W union Z. If you do that correctly, I think you could have gotten the idea of intersection and union. Please go and digest that. Digest that. Then we wait for the next lesson. Please allow me to... to end the lesson so that you can go and work out those questions. If you are able to do them, then you have gotten the idea of union of sets of two sets or intersection of two sets. I'm signing out. I'm ending the lesson.